E. I'm resigning as president of the University of Missouri system. It's the right thing to do. Uh, the response to this announcement, I'm sure, ranges from joy for some to anger to others. It is not unheard of for major college athletes to stage a call for protesting. It does happen rarely. It's been known to occur. But when the majority of football players at the University of Missouri, the major breadwinners for a program that saw them hit almost $84 million in operating revenue for the 2014 fiscal year, when they stand as one and demand the resignation of their school president over charges of not doing enough to stem a recent tide of racism, the school itself is not about to quibble, and we have now seen unprecedented action by athletes in removing a member of the administration. What of the larger issue about race on American college campuses and what this really means? Our guest is a member of the Black 21 Leadership Network and host of Stacy on the Right on KFTK 97.1 FM News Talk in St. Louis, Missouri, Stacy Washington. Stacy, it's a pleasure to talk to you again under a really interesting case here. I'm curious, first of all, what are your callers and what are the people in radio saying right now in St. Louis about this? Well, I mean, I think there's a mixed reaction because anytime you look at um, a protest and you see the fancy tents, you know, the wedding type tents that are usually a thousand dollars a day to rent and you hear the language that they're using. They want to hear the president of uh, the University of Missouri denounce his white privilege. That kind of calls into question the legitimacy of the claims that they have. On the other hand, I'm getting a lot of information from sources on the ground and people that have children at uh, Mizzou and these are black people. They're saying, well, you know, um, there are some racial incidents and this president of this university has been slow to respond and slow to react and there haven't been the kind of uh, kind of addressing the issues type of behaviors that we're looking for. So uh, there's a little bit of validity on both sides. Um, anytime I see the Occupy Wall Street people, which are the Baltimore people, which are the people who torched Ferguson, I'm wary of it, and I don't. It, it delegitimizes what they're saying. All right, now here's Tim Wolf again, the University of Missouri president, basically saying that he hopes the resignation will bring about a brighter future for Mizzou. Here's what he had to say: Use my resignation to heal and start talking again, to make the changes necessary, and let's focus on changing what we can change today and in the future, not what we can't change, which is what happened in the past. But I guess, Stacey, what people are going to ask now is what is that change going to be? Look, there were racial incidents. There was some name calling. There was a swastika that was painted in feces. And apparently Tim Wolf just didn't really react. It was almost as if, yeah, we're going to take care of it maybe in April. That was wrong. He really needed to get on this and take charge of this immediately. That's his job. But what then is the next step? What is that positive nature of change? Well, they want to institute mandatory diversity training for all incoming students. I think that's a load of malarkey. You can understand what kind of training falls under quote unquote diversity. It's not the kind of stuff a lot of parents here in Missouri and elsewhere who are sending their kids here for quite a pretty penny are going to want their children to undergo. Um, and there's also the issue of them wanting white people to denounce their privilege. Since when should anyone be uh, ashamed of themselves for being the, whatever their ethnicity or their race is. When, when do we uh, do we all have to apologize for any privilege that we have? If we've ever been successful, if we have more than what they say we should have, that is the problem here. Addressing acts of racism means you have to know who did the act of racism. If they don't know who yelled the racial epithets out of the truck, if they don't know who smeared the feces, then they can't properly adjudicate those things. There's nothing they can do. On the other hand, there's something that those students can do. My motto on my show and everywhere I talk is the thing that beats racism and glass ceilings is excellence. So if you're a Mizzou football player, you play the best football you can. Make it a winning season. Stop focusing on these incidents. We're all if out of time, un unfortunately, but I tell you what, we're going to have to check in with you here because I've got a feeling and a sense that this story is not going to go away, that the players are going to be worried about repercussions, and a lot of people, I think, in the next couple of days are going to talk more about this, so we're going to stay in touch. Stacy Washington, 97.1 FM News Talk in St. Louis. It's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. The danger of a demagogue and how this nation is turning on its ear and falling down miserably because of the one in Washington, D.C. We'll talk about that and more when the fastest 60 minutes of news, the hard line, continues.